Now let's take a look at creating a style sheet, an XSLT style sheet. And I just want to kind of type through this and show you a couple of gotchas along the way and then we'll build on this example in the next few videos. First up, to start an XSL style sheet, the first thing we're going to do is identify this as an XML document. And so I will put a declaration up here. XML version equals, and I'll put the version number. And you'll notice that this is identical almost to the declaration on the top of a normal XML document. Now one very important thing here, and there's a couple of things I want to show you, is we're going to put a namespace here. And notice the first thing we're going to tell it is that XSL style sheet version equal 1.0. So not only is this an XML document, but it's also an XML style sheet an XSL style sheet, excuse me. But then notice on the next line, I'm going to put a namespace, XMLNS. And if you'll notice, I'm going to alias the namespace to XSL and set that equal to HTTP colon forward slash forward slash www.w3.org forward slash 1999 forward slash XSL. Whoop, hang on, a fat finger there. forward slash XSL forward slash transform. Now I will close this and I want you to notice something. This is actually more or less the root tag from an XSL style sheet because what I'll do is, is I will put some processing instructions in this area and then I will close the style sheet with my close tag XSL style sheet. Now, a couple of things I want you to notice real closely here. First of all, inside my more or less my root tag in my XSL style sheet is the namespace. Now, this thing is vitally important. Everything about this namespace from here to here must match identically or the style sheet will not be applied by the browser. That includes the case of all these, the spelling of all these, and the spacing, and I'll show you why in just a minute. But first of all, keep that in mind. Now, one other thing, on these namespaces, Microsoft jumped ahead of the game and they built a style sheet called uh, XDR and it was XML data reduced and so forth. Those namespaces should not be used. They've now updated Internet Explorer and it uses the correct namespaces and so forth. So for compliance to the recommended way of doing things, use this particular namespace. But notice this namespace tells the browser that the XSL prefix on all the tags is what is built for an XSL style sheet, which means if you mess this up, the namespace that's built into the browser to parse this thing won't work right. Okay, and I'll show you an example in just a minute. So what we've got here is, and I'll make this a little farther down to show you, we will put processing instructions in here in a later video, but I want you to see this is a style sheet in its simplest form because there are defaults built into XSLT and you're going to see them right now because what I'm going to do is save this as and we'll call it people.xsl we'll change this to all files and we'll save it on the desktop here it is right here now to use this in the XML document and I've already got it here so you didn't have to sit through the torture of watching me type this thing and try to talk at the same time we put a processing instruction here. Notice it's got the question mark inside the two tags. It's a processing instruction and it tells it I have an external XSL style sheet. Notice XML style sheet. The type is text slash XSL. And notice here href. This is saying, okay, here's where you can find it. Now notice I, this is in a relative position right now. This is a relative location because I'm telling it look for people XSL. It's going to look for this particular people.xsl file in the same folder where people XML is. If it's any different, then I need to come out here and fully qualify it. I can also put the HTTP and put it on a public site and so forth. So having said that, I have now tied this whole entire XML document to this style sheet. Now this style sheet is going to automatically by default say, you know what? They didn't mention anything to leave out, so I'm just going to go to the root level of the directory and I'm going to return all the text items for each tag that I see. Notice I've saved people XSL. 
I will save People XML just to make sure. Now, if I open People XML up in the browser, notice what it's done. It has returned all the data, all the text data in the tags. But notice it didn't do very much for formatting here. Okay, so that's what we're going to look at is how can we selectively choose this data and how can we work with some formatting on it. And that's what we're going to take up in the next few videos.